Hello everyone. This video is intended for those that are already trained on the LSM 700 or in a few cases the LSM 710 to introduce you to the changes uh, in the LSM 900. So just like before, there are um, startup settings on this sheet here. The startup is slightly different, so I'm going to go over it now. The first step is the same as before. We log into the LSM 900 on the iLab kiosk. I've already done that. The next step is to turn on the excite lamp and turn the intensity dial up. That's number one. That's also the same as before. And it's this one. Uh, I already have this on because I've been running other tests, so I'm not going to turn it on because it already is on. But if you find it off, you need to turn it on and then uh, increase the intensity dial all the way up. The next step is to verify the computer is on and to log in. So this computer, this is a difference from before, we will always leave this computer on. Uh, you can see that's the case here. If for some reason the computer is not on, the startup button is down here. The computer is on in this case. I'm going to hit enter and the login that we're going to use is called Lupin. So we now have a Harry Potter themed uh, username and we have a password now, which is MSL, all lowercase. So now I have logged in to the computer. The next step is to turn on the system switch, which is switch number two, and wait for five seconds. So this is also different to before. Instead of those two um, strips, power strips, we have um, this box. And in this box, we have two switches. We're gonna turn on the system switch, number two, and we're gonna wait five seconds. While we wait, let's see what the next step is. That's going to be to turn on the component switch, which is number three. So if five seconds have elapsed, we're going to go back here, turn on number three. The next step is to wait for the FC12 definite focus box to read off. That's number four. So that's going to be down here. Just like before, we're going to wait until this display says off. So that's going to take a little bit of time. Um, going to be a bunch of noises. It's going to say ready, detecting stand, connected, and then off. So that's good. Then we are going to select the microscope option on the touch screen, which is number five. So if we go here and press this button, and that is going to give us access to um, the new set of objectives on this microscope. I'll go over that in a moment. And then we're going to start Zen. So that is the icon for the new version of Zen. I'm going to double click on it. There's no need to click any button that says start application. Uh, that's different from before. While Zen loads, um, which will take a little bit, let me highlight uh, two other differences. The first is that the joystick, you'll notice moving the joystick leads to movements in the sample that are flipped from what it was before. Uh, it'll be jarring at first, but you'll get used to it. Uh, there is no way of changing that, so you will have to live with it, or you'll have to flip the joystick around. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's an adjustment that at the beginning feels weird, then it'll become second nature, and you'll just get used to the new way of moving the joystick. Uh, the other point uh, I'd like to make is just a comment about the objectives. Uh, you can see we now have a 25x oil objective. Uh, that objective is very good for organoids or um, for taking kind of maps of images that you can then reuse on the oil objective. We have a 40x oil, uh, which has higher resolution and better correction than what we had on the system before. That uh, objective is excellent for subcellular work, particularly in thin samples. Uh, and then the other objectives are the same ones that were here before. You can see that Zen has finished loading as I was discussing the objectives. Um, all the parts discussing how to use Zen, I will record directly from the screen. So that's what comes next.